Okay, so now let's talk about configuration for AAA, and we're gonna start with uh, the method list and then the authentication function. So before we actually get access to the configuration commands for AAA, and we will have to enable the framework, which is gonna be the AAA in the model command issued globally. And then we will need to define a method list for a particular for a particular AAA function we want to use. So there's going to be a separate triple uh, a separate method list for authentication, uh, authorization, and accounting. And then for any of these method lists, uh, there is an option to either create your custom list, which is called user defined or you can use what's known as a default method. The difference between the, the customized, the custom method list and the default method list is that the latter one is actually automatically applied uh, right after you, you define this list. So for example, you will define a default method list for the authentication function uh, for the login service this list is going to be automatically applied to all the lines that support the login service, which is going to be at the console, the auxiliary line, and the virtual terminal lines. So, and, and actually the same is going to apply to, to the authorization method list. So as long as the, a method list is called, low, uh, is, is called default, it is going to get automatically applied. With the user-defined method list, which is when you use a name uh, to be, when you configure a name of the list to be something different than default, uh, for this uh, method list to actually take effect, you will have to manually apply it uh, for a particular service. Okay, so uh, syntax-wise, this is going to be the AAA, then the, the, the function we want to enable. Uh, we will have to create, define the service we want to authenticate, authorize, or account for. Then we will need to define the, the list and finally select a method where a method is going to be the database we want to use for a particular function, such as the local database, or maybe we want to use radius or tactics plus protocols. Okay, so now let's take a look a closer look at authentication. Uh, so the three commonly authenticated services uh, we will be dealing with, this is going to be the Plonex. Uh, so this stuff is something we will probably want to configure on the switches. And then for the switches and the routers, there is an option to uh, configure authentication for the login service. So this is going to be for the shell access and also for uh, to authenticate the, the enabled password. So the privilege mode. Uh, connections, access to the privileged mode, which is going to be via the enable command. And as I mentioned, if the one of these method lists, like for example, login is not going to be the default method list, we, we will actually have to apply under the, in this case, line, and this is going to be the login authentication command for the login service. Now, as we will see also with authorization, there is a concept of so-called fallback authentication on offer or authorization which is going to come into play when more than one method was configured uh, for a list. Like in our case we've got the first method as defined as stackx plus with a fallback method being the local database. Now the key thing to remember here about this feature is that the fallback method is only going to come into play when the primary method uh, failed, like you were not able to contact the TechX Plus server, or maybe uh, an error message was returned by the server. If the primary database or just method is going to tell you that authentication fails because, for example, password was incorrect, or the user was not found in the database, you will not be using the fallback method for the connection. You will basically terminate the session. Then we've got the authorization function. 
uh, which is typically used for free services and network. Uh, this one is going to be used with uh, mostly with radius for to authorize to the uh, network services, maybe download access lists with that one X um, or on the routers also with um, easy VPN when you want to specify the location of the root policy. And then we have the exec authorization and command authorization. The exec authorization is the authorization to the shell, which is the command line, which is actually going to be looking at two different uh, things here. First one, so this is going to be exec authorization because there is a significant difference between uh, command and exec authorization. So with exec, this is when you're going to be looking if the user should be actually assigned access, should be actually given access to the command line, which is the, the execution shell. And then if the user is supposed to access the command line, what are the shell attributes you want to assign him? 